Because his image has become a real standard. His trademark sparkling sequined outfits with countless jewels and always the candelabra. He was colorful when colorful wasn't cool, a forerunner of the bold self-expression that has become so commonplace with today's young pop performers. The name, of course, is Liberace. Lee, as he's called by his friends, and he has a lot of friends, including one Gary Casucci from the Boston area, whom he plucked from obscurity and now features in his current engagement at Radio City Music Hall in New York. And I spoke with Liberace, Lee, at the Baldwin Piano and Organ Company in Manhattan last week on the eve of his opening night. City Music Hall is uh, a one-of-a-kind experience for someone like me. And last year, I played there for the first time. And it was such a thrill and such a happening that uh, it seemed like the, the day I finished that engagement, I started planning the next year's engagement, which is now about to start. And uh, I'm excited about all the uh, new surprises that I plan and some of the new uh, uh, innovations and the new costumes and the new music. And I tried to make this show uh, better than the last one. Do you have recollections of growing up in Milwaukee during the period of the Depression that you'd want to share with me? Well, I suppose uh, uh, we were surrounded by what you might consider poor people, but I never felt poor. I came from a very uh, uh, rich uh, family in, in, in that they were very resourceful and, and we were uh, brought up to respect each other and uh, everybody in our family was like a team you know we all did something to augment the income my brother george for instance worked in a uh, sandwich shop making sandwiches at, and during the daytime he gave violin lessons at the northwestern conservatory what did you do uh, i did everything i worked in restaurants i washed dishes i was a bus boy and uh, I was uh, uh, under scholarship at the time, so I had to help pay for music and books, which were very expensive and quite a luxury for my family. So I, I did these odd jobs. I played for style shows and dancing school lessons, and uh, wherever uh, I could make a buck, you know. And then at the end of the week, we'd all pool our, our income, so to speak, and uh, we got allowances. Uh, How I much used did you to, get? I used to get 25 cents a week. And uh, uh, that enabled us in those days, believe it or not, to be able to go to a movie and maybe get some popcorn. You could get into a movie in those days for 10 cents, you know. So uh, we managed very well. And then as I got older, a little bit older, I started playing in places where people used to give me tips. And I used to make tips in the restaurant. And of course, all those tips, I, I kind of saved those to, to buy, uh, you know, like uh, nice looking suits because I used to wear my brother George's hand-me-downs. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wanted to have my own clothes. That was very important to me, to have my own clothes. You've got and, them now. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the first time I bought a full dress suit. I was uh, 16 at the time, and my parents were really dead set against my wearing uh, tails a full dress suit because they thought it would make me look too old, you know. But I, I wanted to look older, you know. I wanted to look uh, like I'd been around a little bit. And now, of course, it's the opposite. I want to look younger. <laughs> <laughs> All of us who followed your career have heard you talk about your brother George and your mother. But I myself have never heard you talk about your father. I do owe him a great deal because he was, uh, he was a musical purist. And I think because of his uh, musical integrity, I was able to uh, continue my studies and become a concert pianist before I became a popular musical entertainer. Did he live long enough to see your great success? Fortunately, my dad lived to be 93. Oh, my. And my mother lived to be 89, so longevity runs in our family. I have a sister uh, who's uh, in her early 70s, and she looks 50. She's just remarkable. She looks like Barbara Stanwyck. I'm very proud of her. And uh, people say I look younger than, than my years, and I think it's because I've inherited some of this uh, youthful vitality from my family. Are you worried, Lee, about what some of the young people are doing in the music world today? Wh what do you like that's going on now? I love, I love uh, anybody that has the courage to experiment into new fields and 
new forms of entertainment. If you analyze the great successes of even some of the rock artists, the ones who seem to make some kind of an impact are ones who are very individual and who, are, uh, who dare to be different. I was one of those people who dared to be different at a time in our society when it was sometimes frowned upon. Lee, you're someone who dared to be different. You were different, but you took some abuse for that. There were times when you probably were humiliated, but you were strong. Did it well, hurt it, that kind of Well, criticism? it did. It did in the beginning, but then I realized that it was working in my behalf. And I coined the phrase, uh, I cried all the way to the bank. <laughs> but uh, the fact is that in today's uh, uh, musical uh, world, uh, the different uh, and the individual and uh, away from the uh, norm, so to speak, is really look, look forward to. People really are looking for something different and they have come to accept, uh, you know, different uh, uh, styles and entertainment and uh, uh, it, it isn't just the young people who are doing it, it's some of the old timers that are enjoying the greatest as successes of their entire career. It's hard to believe it, but in a way, Liberace is the forerunner of someone like Cyndi Lauper, isn't he? Oh, I met her the other day. She is something fabulous. I love this girl. And, and you know, just a few years ago, she was unknown, just absolutely. She stuck to it, and she made a statement, and sooner or later, people are going to pay attention. Leo, I tell you that early in January in The Good Day Show, we had a young man on the program and he was just on his way to Las Vegas to begin a whole new career for him. Does the name Gary Casucci ring a bell, Mr. Liberace? Yes, it does. In fact, uh, when I was uh, playing in Hyannisport, uh, he, he was playing at the local uh, hotel, and uh, I was uh, privileged to go and hear him play. And at first, uh, I ordered my dinner, you know, and all of a sudden I said, uh, this young man who's playing the piano is, is exceptionally good. He just came walking by the piano and said, hello, and he comes walking by and I said, hello. <laughs> and I knew he was going to be out there at the, um, you know, he was having dinner, and I purposely waited to play his theme song when he was leaving, so I caught his attention. So uh, on my way out, I asked him to leave his name and address at the at the hotel. The first thing he said to me after I was done was, uh, have you ever been out to Vegas? I said, no. He says, well, I own my own place out there. It would be a great showcase for you. I said, tell me when. And so the next thing I knew, he was in Las Vegas playing the Tivoli Gardens, which is my restaurant. I love stories like this. I know, it's terrific. Would, would you mind if we brought Gary Casucci in here a minute? I'm oh. sure he'd love to meet you. Well, Gary <laughs> is... Uh, has the distinction Gary. of Come on in, Gary. he has a distinction of being the oldest oh, member of our group. Well, he wants to say hello That's to his parents. Uh, go ahead, go say ahead. hello. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. Hi, Jane. Hi, Nicholas. Uh, he wanted to do that. Uh, Gary, of course, I tease you. What does this man Liberace mean to you? Well, it's going to be very exciting playing at Radio City. I went there at a very young age with my parents, and I did remember it when I went on stage just a couple of days ago and I looked out on the audience and it was, it was fantastic. And um, just being a part of the Liberace show is something that I'll, and I'll cherish for the rest of my life. And I thank Lee just for the opportunity. When I, I got this idea to do Slaughter on 10th Avenue with six pianos at Radio City Music Hall, uh, Gary was one of the first people I invited to be part of those six pianos. Gary is uh, one of the uh, few pianists that I have encountered in my travels around the country who is perhaps the most dedicated uh, pianist I've met in a long time. The thing that I've learned about Lee, he'll have one ear on us pianists, one ear on a creative side, always thinking of something to add to the piece that we're learning, one eye on the show, and when we get to the hall, I'm sure the other eye is going to be on the audience. That was the rehearsal. Uh, Everybody should know that was the rehearsal before the performance at Radio City Music Hall that you, Ms. Prose, got a chance to see. Well, you know, those kids that played with Liberace, including Gary, there was one 14-year-old boy who played um, the Warsaw Concerto. 
absolutely knocked everyone out. They were on their feet. And uh, the Rockettes were there. They're a part of the show. And afterward at the party, we you formed a little line and <laughs> interviewed a didn't. couple of the Rockettes, one from Salem and one from Everett. Oh, wonderful. And uh, really fun. So we'll bring you that later in the week. But it Great. was just Terrific. wonderful.